My book, Lake Effect, came about because my sister asked me to write about her illness and its possible connections with pollution on the lake. She had a very serious form of ovarian cancer. Uh, while I was fulfilling my promise to my sister and writing the book that she had asked me to write, my own cancer was diagnosed. So what I like to say is that the book represents a promise fulfilled, its reward realized. If I, if my sister had not had her cancer, I would not have known to look for mine. My sister and I grew up in a heavily polluted town on the shores of Lake Michigan called Waukegan. There were about a million pounds of polychlorinated biphenyls there when we were growing up, but we didn't know it at the time. Uh, my mother had died when I was young. My sister was a kind of substitute mom to me. It, she took me to the sh beach often. Uh, the beach in my hometown was a small strip of land surrounded by factories. Uh, it was a heavily industrialized area for many, many years. So when we were there, when we were young and going to the beach and eating the fish, we really had no idea that the pollution along the lake was even there, let alone that the many ways that it might have worked its way into us. My sister and I were not immediately aware that the pollutants in my town might have any effect at all on our health. It was only in the aftermath of her illness that what had been a real scientific controversy and a political controversy hit home. At that point, and she was quite ill at that point, our curiosity took root. We really needed to know what had made her sick. On the shores of Lake Michigan, there was a massive die-off of alewife, uh, a small fish that suffered, uh, it's an invasive species, so it was suffering both biological stress but also from the toxic pollution in the lake. The fish that washed ashore washed ashore in unbelievable numbers, in biblical proportions, and it was the first sign that there was something wrong with the lakes. What we would later find out is that the fish in the lake carried enormous burdens of the toxins in their own bodies. And therefore, the way I like to put it is that the fish created an uninterrupted pathway from factory outflows to dinner plates all along the shore, including my own. Not only were there potential links between the pollution in, her, in our town and her illness, but the, the pollution might have, have affected me. Um, and the story that had been very abstract became quite personal. And I started to investigate it with real earnestness. In order to write my book, Lake Effect, I spent many years researching the topic. I hired researchers to help me understand the literature. I had experts look at my sister's slides and the particular kinds of cells that populated her tumor. I spent a good long time thinking about this but the, the thing that was really amazing about it was it was not all that difficult. It was emotionally taxing, but the science is actually pretty clear. And it wasn't that difficult to come up with very credible links between the pollution in my town and the cancers that we suffered. Throughout the course of my illness, doctors discouraged me from asking what might have caused my cancer. There's a broad cultural tendency to not want to ask what causes particular cancers. And my point is that stories matter. I think that my story matters. My sister's story matters. There's a lot we can learn in the face of uncertainty from individual stories. And I quote several doctors in the book who have come to that view as well. It was about a million pounds of a well-known cancer-causing pollutant in my town, polychlorinated biphenyls. And I spent a very long time thinking about the possible links between the chemicals in my town and my own disease. And here's the conclusion that I came to. There is so much evidence that they could have been linked that I think it is a far bigger stretch to think that they had no effect than that they had an effect at all. And the way I say it in Lake Effect is, I have no courtroom worthy proof and I have no doubt. Moving forward, we need to do two things. First, we need to clean up the pollution that's there, and there's this law in the books, the Superfund, that would allow us to do that, particularly 28 sites around the Great Lakes in the U.S. alone. The other thing we need to do is prevent new toxins from being introduced into the environment. Uh, what we're going to need is political will to make sure that the Superfund is refunded and that the money is available to clean up those sites that continue to pose a problem in terms of human health. 
Island Press represented a unique opportunity for me. I was dealing with very complex issues and they understood very clearly the need for a book like mine but also the limits of a book like mine and I was never pushed to do anything that was uh, would be in the remotest way controversial or not well suited to my story. They were amazing.